Last time on The Tale Untold. Our heroes found the kidnapped citizens of Port Townsend imprisoned in pits guarded by orcs and goblins. After initially failing to trick the goblinoid guards, an invigorating combat ensued with our heroes as the victors. The townsfolk, now free and safely on their way home, Yuck notices. The team is being watched. They aren't doing, you know, they're kind of in the dark. Um, they're pretty far away, but you can see the reflection in their eyes kind of lit up. And you particularly notice that these are cobalt eyes. How far away? They're, you know, they're across the water. Their water is probably 20 feet across. And then they're maybe 60 feet down the, down the waterway. So, um, we should uh, cross, cross the, the river. Agreed. Um, but, but do so cautiously. Is this a different way out? Um, maybe? I don't know. I might have a friend who's here across the river. Oh, that's very interesting. I didn't know you had any of your cobalt friends around here, or I guess dwarfs. Did they come oh. from the mining town? I was going to say, yeah, I didn't I say cobalt. I thought we didn't uh, know that. I don't know if it's cobalt. Sorry. I made an assumption as a person, but I, the only friends I know he had were dwarves. Mirth so, is racist. Yeah. <laughs> Mirth is absolutely racist. Um, <laughs> he is. Um, yes, I, th I think I saw uh, maybe some cobalt friends. I know if we're oh. nice, maybe they help us. All right. Um, Aberforth. With him kind of pointing this out to you, you can also see the eyes. Uh, at this point, another pair kind of pops up next to him. Mirth, you don't have dark vision, so you would not. No, pick it up. I do not. So Aberforth, you can see that there's another pair of that. There's now two pairs of eyes over there. Um, the more you guys talk about it, the more kind of movement you're seeing over there. What are you guys doing? I wave to the kobolds across the river. Eh. Are you, hello, friends. Friends. Oh, okay. Hello. Are you, why are you with, with these people? Um, I, um, got abandoned by my clan. Abandoned? Um, you're going to see one of them kind of scurry across these platforms on the far side. Um, to get close enough that you guys can see that everyone can see the kobold just like straight across the water now. What? What are you? What are you doing without a clan? We can't survive without a clan. Jack Jack made his own clan with non kobolds with much much bigger people, but you know it's still it's still clan. I say, hey, who are you talking to? I can't. Ah. Yeah. Oh. I wish I had better eyes. <laughs> You're just hearing a voice come out of the void. Yeah, you can you can see and hear him now. It's it's pretty faint, but on the far side of the water is now a kobold. Um, oh well, well, you should. You you don't have a clan. You've made it. These are this is very peculiar here. Oh well, um, Jack has always been peculiar kobold. That is not a new. Well, I guess it is like a kobold to be peculiar. Exactly. Um, so maybe I'm the most kobold. Well, well, the, the the goblins and orcs will be back soon, I imagine. Um, you guys are trying to get away, yes? We've been, um, we've been watching for a bit now. He kind of looks around at everyone else kind of and tries to make sure. And, and these are your friends. You're sure about that? We should... Help them 1, all out. 1,000 percent. That's a number that Jack remembered. Oh, that that's a big number. That's a very big number. It's the biggest number Jack know. Oh. oh. That might be bigger than the biggest number I know. Well, what's the um, biggest number you know? This is, this is a wonderful exactly how, <laughs> this, this is why I play D&D, um, &D, everybody. I think, I think, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> nine, 900 seems big that's but, not but then there's a thousand but then i guess there's two thousand oh sh shut 
<sighs> While this is going on, Aberforth pulls a flask out of his pocket and just starts drinking. <laughs> right, right. Yes, yes. We must be going. We must be going. Um, you you have loaded up that boat with plenty. Of... Did you already let the people go? I slashed the rope. It's starting to drift. Um, yeah, um... away from the dock. Tibbled is kind of rowing. Uh, he's probably gotten a little bit down, and he's kind of trying to figure out does he need to come back or not. There's, there's a crossing. The there's a crossing just down the way. If you if you follow us, the the orcs the orcs and goblins don't bother us on the other side of the water much. Um, All right. So he is going to lead you down this way, following the ocean, toward the ocean, because you guys have this little pathway here. Um, and he is going to take you to this gap where there's a rickety wooden platform, like a kind of a dock st sticking out into the water. And then there's just a rope hanging that they, they swing across on that oh gets God. them to the side platform. How far is the jump between platforms? It's, it's all over the place. It's, you know, they're definitely like built for kobolds. And so there's like longer platforms and they kind of like go up a couple feet and there's another platform. It's really built based on like where they got the best like connection into the rock. Not really. No, no, I'm, I'm wondering if I could jump and sending to use the rope if they're too far apart. Because uh, I have the feeling a rope that's suitable for a kobold might not take a adult human with 25 pounds of gear. The jump? I mean, you could, you could definitely try to jump it but you would notice the rope itself is pretty thick they kind of work with what they get here so it's not like they've got special kobold rope they've got the rope they steal from the humans from the boats especially it looks like it would hold your weight it's but you could also try to jump it is everyone following yes okay well i'm following i should talk for everybody okay if the gap is less than nine feet i can jump it <laughs> it's like 15 feet, but I don't really use the jumping rolls anyways. You'll make an athletics check. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, because, uh, woo. could I make an acrobatics check? Um, are you like using the rope for assistance at all, or you just don't want to? I'm touch using the rope, the rope mostly as a safety feature. I'm not trying to put as much weight on it as I can help I'm using it more as a, uh, Fail safe. uh last resort sure. in case I, in case I totally miss. Sure. Yeah. You can make an acrobatics check then if you're using the rope. Well, that's an acrobatics check of a dirty 20. Yeah. Get you, across. you can do it just fine. The rope seems sturdy. All right. You're we're not going to die. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of swings back. All right. Let's go. Gek, are you going? Yeah, I'm going. You're small enough. You don't need to troll for anything. It's it's natural for you. <laughs> That's why I was like, let's just double check. <laughs> the rogue who has good jumping skills should probably double check. <laughs> All right, there's a piece of everybody. You got this. I believe in you. Mirth is mirthful leap a like limited use thing. New. Okay. Uh, so I get a D8 extra distance on uh, pretty much all my jumps. You can you ride. can make this jump easy if you want to. Yeah. No I'll, no rope necessary. I'll do a little leap and twirl in the air like a <laughs> an ice dancer or a, yeah. Skater. Okay. And Aberforth? If I were to jump it, would that be a feat of dexterity or strength? That would be athletics. Strength. The other option then. Okay. Um can you make a Acrobatics roll for the air rope. Me. Hey, that's a six. Okay, ten. Okay, you're in not very graceful. Certainly not your favorite landing. You might be a little embarrassed knowing Sir Aberforth. But you can make it across the whole plat. The platform you guys have all landed on is also kind of rickety. This definitely shakes it. But you're all safely across. The kobolds are going to dress Gek. We, we have a, we have a little den up this way and there's, there's someone we'd like you to meet. I think, I think it'll be good. Sure. Yeah. We don't have any plans, right guys? 
We do have those two uh, other humans with us. Do they clear the gap? Are they? Are you wanting them to follow you? I'm assuming they follow us since they don't want to run around on their own. Okay, I didn't know if you guys were sending them off one way or not. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to let them go on their own unless there's like a clear shot back to town from where we are at. Right, no, it would be either toward the city or toward the um, hornets. Yeah, hornets. Eh. Let's take option C. Okay, let's see. They they cross fine. <laughs> Both of them kind of swing over. This platform is looking, you know, now you've got what four five six seven eight creatures on it five of which are full size with with those two landing on the other platform the kobolds are looking a little shaky like we we should get going quickly and and spread out they're gonna kind of move on to the other platforms um on the side of it so they will start leading you along these platforms built in the wall and they are actually going now that, now that you've gotten to the crossing they're going back farther from the ocean to the den they're leading you to there's gonna be you know kind of hand over foot climbing can i just get a basic athletics check from everyone sure okay, okay. Athletics. Can I use acrobatics? Seven. Oh gosh, a two. C eleven. I believe I'm missing someone. Five for me. Oh gosh. Um. Yeah. (laughs) You found our weakness. Yeah. Um, I'm a strong group. We we jump and we swing and we do flips and stuff, but. Pick up a boulder? No, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are climbing, and you're helping each other out. The kobolds are helping you out. So you guys are slipping here and there, but a kobold catches you. Or one of your other more nimble friends grabs you, steadies you. But one of the prisoners following you is going to slip. He's going to take a step. The the platform's going to crack a bit. Uh, He's going to slide off. He's going to grab on but he is now hanging from this wooden platform that's now weakened help ah oh can can someone give me a hand that's gonna crack a bit more what's the marching order let's let's go with that first they're kobolds bringing me to a koboldy place i'm probably in the front which i'm not super comfortable with i feel (laughs) like it's kind of like leia being led to the uh what's the little furball guys the ewoks Ewoks. like like it's like leia being led to the ewok camp (laughs) um who's who's after him and i guess you guys can kind of lead the people so where would you have the people well when we jumped across the river it was i think yuck then danian then myself, then Sir Aberforth. So I think that that's probably a reasonable marching order. Yeah, and I the, can take at the rear. And then the two people at the end, or are they are they after Sir Aberforth, or are they in the middle somewhere? I I'm immediately behind uh, Yuck, if I can help it, mostly because I do not want to get lost in the dark. <laughs> right. So I'm trying to stay in the middle. I'm thinking that maybe Aberforth should be in the, at the very end, just to protect from a sneak. So there's some sort of barrier if there's an attack from behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think okay. we would put the civilians in the middle of the huddle. So maybe between myself and Danian, or Mirth and Danian. Okay, so then both of you would have would be kind of in arms reach of them. Yeah, you could. You're, you're the most nimble on this kind of scape, so you could get back there. If you want, um, uh, sh- sure. You know, kind of scramble back. Yeah. Um, okay. So you're gonna just try to grab hold of them. Yeah. Okay. I'll do what I can. Can I get an animal handling? <laughs> Arcana. <laughs> It'd make for a really fun uh, twist if that happened. Peace out. Let's Call go for the dolphins to jump guess... up and help you. Let's go acrobatics unless you think you, there's something better you want to do. Nah, acrobatics is fine. Okay. Uh, 
hey, uh, 17. Okay. Um, you can kind of grab his hand and you can basically stabilize the situation. He's no longer on this precarious thing. He's dangling from your hand, but I don't think you could pull him up. Okay. So now you're just kind of holding him while he's dangling. Um, but he's no longer dangling from a platform that's about to break. I'll reach over from the other side and we'll pull him up. Okay. Can I get a strength check, a athletics check with advantage because you're being helped? I have plus zero. <laughs> Fifteen. Okay. With that, you can you can hoist him up and the the rest of the path is uneventful. The kobolds will take you to a whole kind of another tunnel leading leaving the water area going into the rock. And in here, you're going to find mostly sleeping quarters for the kobolds or the kind of a couple of pods connected with small tunnels. Each pod has kind of piles of cloth that they sleep on. It's surprisingly neat. You can tell that like the cloth that they're sleeping on is all tattered, but it's folded very nicely, very crisp creases laid out, kind of stacked very kindly. There's a couple of them just sleeping. There's a couple people, a uh, couple of the kobolds sitting, playing kind of marbles with some stones that they found in the corner. This is, this is where we, where we sleep. Um, the, the goblins and orcs don't really come around here, but there, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Let me, let me go see if I can find her. Um, and one of them's gonna, the one that's kind of been leading you this way is gonna run off for a bit. Gotcha. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna collect my dagger back from the human that was following us, uh, all the prisoners. And I'm gonna start a short rest. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm also gonna do that if I can't. Um, I'll stand okay. watch. I don't feel the need to sit down. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, you guys can short rest here. Um, it's it's a, it's a safe spot. You guys made it to safety. Okay. While this is going on, because the other guy's going to come back and you guys will be resting for this. But, Gek, they're going to come back with a much better dressed kobold. The rest of them have kind of been loincloth rags. This one is in cleaner, whiter garb. And they're going to introduce themselves. I am Pock, the kobold priestess of it, of this, um, of this clan. Uh, I've been told that we have a new kobold. And oh, where, where might you be from? I am from, and then I tell him where I am from. Uh, I go back to the thing. You're oh, from the Fenra? Yeah, but I kind of don't want to be from Fenra. Um, <laughs> I'm from, um, yeah, yeah. I'm from, uh, Fenra. Oh, Fenra, you've come a long way. Um, yes. You've, who? And, and you don't have, you don't travel with other kobolds? Um, not, not anymore. No, it's, 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 um, Gek tried to do. Uh, his own thing. His own thing. What a, what a noble cause for a kobold. Um, tell me, do you have a dragon you serve? Um, not anymore. Your own, your own thing, right? That, of course not. I don't know what you're talking about. He is a dragon born. He doesn't need to follow a dragon, but I guess it's neither here nor there. Surprise! I thought I didn't know there was other miniature dragonborns. I thought you were kind of a one-off. Yuck! It's nice to see the, those others of your kind. Oh, oh, my, oh, jeez, that was insensitive of me. I I lean into Puck. Um, it's okay. Just humor him. <laughs> Puck Puck looks very confused, but um, yeah, dragonborn. Which, oh, okay. Um, I give her like the wink and the thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> is there something that my character can roll to see if he can put two and two together here? <laughs> um, I think everyone but uh, Danyan is fully aware that these are kobolds. <laughs> kobolds are common. You've seen them in cities even. Yeah, he would know. 
everyone but Danian has figured this out. <laughs> Danian hasn't been paying a terrible amount of attention to the kobolds. Um, he tends to target taller folk for his entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is only Danian who's confused by this. Okay. There's... Have, so if you have no dragon, maybe maybe you'd be interested in this. Here, come. I think, I think you'll want to see this. Have you ever heard of Ketun? Ketun? And then I look back at... Did I ever see the map that we got? No. Not that I know of. Then you I you have... would know that the continent is named Ketun. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, let's let's under let's under Ketun. No, uh, the K Ketun the dragon. Ketun the what? Here, here, follow me. I'm very like shuffling, like nervously, like just like darting my eyes back and forth. So, you guys rest and kind of talk. About this is probably where you were explaining where you're from and the like. So you guys get your short rest, but then Pac is going to lead you kind of down a corridor to another area of the Cobalt hideout. If you will, are going to follow her. Oh, so you guys got me too. I assume. I'll follow along. I don't have anything to do while they're short resting. Uh, the, this is after the short rest. Everyone's short rest. If and we're invited, are you... yeah, I'll follow. Yeah. They see that you're with Gek and they let you come. Right before we leave, is there any food that seems to be out and about? There is, there is kobold food. There is no other food. I'm just going to gently nudge Abiforth, not towards the food, and then walk away from him to see what he does. Not to just, you know, razz him a little bit more. <laughs> see if, see if kobold food is good enough at enough. this point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, but I'm not even paying attention to him. I'm just walking away and seeing if I hear any noises of him grabbing at food because <laughs> I'm a mean spirited person <laughs> and then I follow is Aberforth reacting to the, the um, kobold meat it's very smoky I mean I think at this point with how much time he's spent eating good berries he, he's just happy to have something that tastes like meat okay so he'll he'll take a bit mm -hmm. okay um, he's beyond the threshold of pickiness yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Then Pac is going to lead you guys to an opening area. You're going to see this very now well lit area for the, for, for what you guys are used to um, and what the, the rest of the caves are like. There's a nice kind of land They're They're not matching, but they're like proper lanterns instead of torches lining the wall but each one is kind of a different one. They're a little dinged up, but they're proper metal lanterns. And each one has been polished very nicely. In this circular room, in the center of the room, there is a small island surrounded by a kind of moat with a wooden bridge crossing to that island. And on this island is a small stone shrine. It's very, like, smooth stone, but you can see it's got cracks and knocks and not just taken off it and it makes this small shrine and at the center of it is a carved stone statue of a sleeping dragon this this is our this is our shrine to ketun he is he is the dragon of the north that sleeps and he blesses us all he's the god of the dragons he, that's, that's beautiful he is he believed that he is bred breathed life into all of the kobolds and we all come from his grace and have you started creating a a, um, a, a nice horde for for Kitu? oh the the um we have we have little to offer we just have our prayers and come play come to this place when we i whisper to abaforth next to me if he's the god of the dragons is that like the whole world his horde like Everything that exists. I don't know. Maybe I'm too existential. Um, At this point, Tom, <laughs> Aberforth's eyes go wide a little bit. That is deep. Are we anything more than really just jewels in the crown of a celestial? <laughs> don't think too much. You think I'm shrugs it off and goes back to eating some meat? <laughs> that was known. All right. We'll let you continue. I, I had to interject yeah. that. Go ahead. Yeah, I love it. K Ketun, the 
the dwarves believe that Ketun carved the continent um, with his with his breath, shaped this place, and it is named Ketun for that reason. But but we we just believe that he's he's blessed us. You've you've really never heard of Ketun. Have I really? Have, have I heard of Ketun? I don't know. No, not really. Okay, then I don't. Well, no, it. you were with dwarves. Yeah. Dwarves, no, yeah. Wait, wait, dwarves. When you said that, that, that's why I was wondering. Yeah, you would have heard. They aren't, like, devoutly worshipping of Ketun, but they do kind of believe that the dragon carved the mountains especially and the kind of carved the continent and shaped it. And Oh, that Ketun. Now the stories make so much more sense now. They were saying <laughs> Ketun spread his wings and breathed fire. And I was like, how does land do that? And now it makes so much more sense. Meanwhile, I whisper over um, to Danyan. I'm like, need to eat in order for your breath to cut stone. I imagine that there are some celestial peppers that are involved, of course. <laughs> Actually, sounds kind of good. I work well with this meat. And then bring down some of the tang. <laughs> um, you really are ashamed to be around. Go ahead, continue. Uh, can I get a? I guess is anyone here? Would they follow kind of religious information? I believe otherwise, Danian and Kiek would have a chance at knowing this. Because Danian, I know, has just been to the temple. Not really. No one else has like <laughs> proficiency in religion. I have plus four from my intelligence in religion, but not training in it. I could do, um, I could do a history check, maybe, if that's pertinent. Let that seems more not so much. Thing. Let's do Danian and Get. Can you each make a religion check? Ew. This diet really doesn't like me today. It's a five. <laughs> That's a six. Okay. Was at the wrong temple. Yeah, I guess you know, they might be <laughs> more of a more of a dwarf and kobold thing. But the acolytes of the hunt huntsmen uh, believe that they're to kill Gaetun and hunt him down, and it's a whole like <laughs> celestial battle. So thing. I will I will give you this much, Danian. There are not many like sightings of gods in this world it's kind of much more hearsay there's people who kind of claim to be divinely powered but no one can really prove that there's like a god they're connected with or where that god is or anything like that the exception is ketun where everyone knows ketun is real everyone knows he exists because he is you can go see him sleeping in where you guys can now see the crater of Ketun. So anyone who wants to knows that they can go to the crater of Ketun and see this giant sleeping dragon right in that area. So this is the only like, they kind of think that the gods have went away or started taking less interest in this plane and many of them disappeared or just kind of went to different planes, but Ketun stuck around and is just literally sleeping in that spot. So they know gods exist because Ketun exists. Gotcha. So the, this is, we, we really think that, you know, kobolds should be blessed in the waters of Ketun. Is that something you'd be interested in? So, sure. Well, well, come this way. Pak will lead you on, like, into the, into the shrine area, and there is the small kind of wooden statue of Ketun, or a stone statue of Ketun in a bowl of water. And as you're approaching this, it is like mostly the caves are very cool and damp. And then as you get close to this, it is very warm. And she'll kind of do a bit of a ceremony and dip her fingers in the water and touch them to your forehead. And you can tell that the water she's touching is like quite warm, as if it was like from a hot spring. But She'll kind of anoint you in the, these waters and you'll have a bit of a blessing from k -Tune. You don't notice any immediate effects, but... I'm assuming I didn't. Yeah. I did not expect any effects. I was just trying to be a good guest. 
Mm -hmm. There, you know, you have been blessed by k -Tune. May he watch over you and protect you like all kobolds. Well, thank you. Well, this, will, will you be, would you like to stay here or will you be off with your party? Oh, um, I'll be a, um, traveling salesperson for your guys. They, they, they seem quite odd. They're very lanky and tall. Well, everything is odd if, if you think about it. I have no this idea what that is. This is true. Means. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. All right. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you, Geek. If we can be of any other assistance, please let us know. No worries. I, I will come back here and, um, if I, if I hear anything from Ketur, now that I've been blessed, I will let you know what I hear from him. <laughs> That'll be... I am secretly planning on being their own god. <laughs> you want to be the, the kobold I'm god? I'm going to be like, you know, like a false prophet. I'm going to talk for Ketur. Oh, them. good. Oh my god, I love that. Oh, no. He <laughs> wants oh, to become good, the yes. avatar of Ketur. Yeah. I love that. Oh, I swear, yes. the deeper we get into this campaign, the more convinced I am that we are not the heroes here. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean heroes? About. They're going to believe they're doing something good. They're just going to do things and get a horde for k but also for me and, you know, us. So <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, if there's a character who did that in the story, he's not the hero. <laughs> but what if I he disagree. also does good things? He's giving them a purpose. I like the idea of having a personal army that does things out of religious fervor. It's a lot harder to dissuade those that are religiously fervorous. Uh, is that a word? I don't know. He says, not at all sounding like a cult leader. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, Pac will kind of leave you guys here. She will start praying at the shrine and let you guys have free roam a bit. You're not really in like much of a it doesn't seem like there's much here other than sleeping quarters and you know cooking and things but you're in this kind of protected den is there a way for us to get back to the town from here without going back through the caves you get the sense there might be a way out through like other tunnels or you could follow the water are we um, on the the coast now so we could just go as we please or are we up in the, the cliffs or something? You're still like in the, um, you're still like on this kind of like an underwater little cove with the okay. ocean here. So you're still okay. like connected a subterranean to harbor, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's this kind of subterranean. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah. I mean, we want to get these last few people out of here without getting killed. Uh, Definitely let the town know that there's a literal horde beneath them. Yeah, some good, some bad. I guess I'd probably also talk to the kobolds and see if they'd be interested in like a mutual trade agreement with the town, trying to convince them that it's smart to, since they're, it's, I get the sense that they're opposed to the goblins. They don't like the goblins and the orcs and such, right? Yeah, like, they kind of, you know, they agree on some things like it's better to be they kind of use them as for the safety they provide right uh, you know if yeah. there's a bunch of orcs in the in the cave that's safer for them than just being kobolds that anyone who kind of go raid right so they kind of put you get the sense with the goblins too that they kind of put up with the orcs because they add some kind of weight to the the caves and make it a little less likely that adventurers will just come in and clear them out right I, I I think I'd probably try and suggest to them that it's beneficial for them to perhaps ally themselves with the townsfolk rather than be beholden to the orcs whims mm -hmm. and that this might be an opportune moment to show a sign of good faith by helping the townsfolk escape the uh, orc okay. enslavement and, okay. uh, you know, yeah, find some you goodwill. Get... As you kind of describe the situation, they, can I get a persuasion check? That is something that I do. Not okay. super well, but not bad. All right. That 20! Ha! There you go. 23. So, I mean. Um, role play. Yeah. So you get, 
you definitely pique their ears and their interest. And, you know, they're, you kind of talked with them a bit. They kind of go along with anything that sounds smart. <laughs> um, so it starts sounding smart. They're really like certain. Uh, they're like, oh, I guess that, that could be nicer to be out there. Um, it's very bright out there. Would would we go with the with the humans and not live, at live all. up there? This is your home. We're not looking to displace you. I just if you're looking not to be the target of adventurers, making it known that you're allies of those who oppose the harm of others is always good. Plus you're here in the middle of this cove with not a lot of resources. Could be good to have someone on the outside for you to trade with. Oh, that does sound good. That does sound very good. Lots of meat out there. More than just crab and fish. I I casually Um, walk up behind Mirth and go, like it was night patrol. And back up. I'm terribly sorry. (laughs) Yes. You have great dark vision. Nice. You can see very well in the night. You would make some a good nighttime counterpart to the town's guard if you're interested in that kind of thing. But I see you're quite pacifistic with your worship of the great Katoon. Well, I we I think I would make quite a good guard. As long as I don't have to hurt anyone. If nothing else, scouts would be appreciated. Oh, that sounds very good. What, mm. Pop, what do, you, what do you think? Oh, well, I, you know, I think the lions could be formed. I don't know how much there is up there for us, but, you know, an, an ally with the, with the humans would be, would go a long way. Hmm. You, th- you think you would, you would do that for us? Hmm. I have killed many goblins this day, and as much as it, was necessary in the moment I rue the death of others. I don't, you seem like fine folk. I wish all to be prosperous, as that is how we all elevate ourselves into greater prosperity. You know, we, we are fine folk, and they also kind of nodding with you. And, we do like prosperity. Prosperity is good. They all start nodding. Okay, I like this. Um, and perhaps yeah, perhaps you could begin a horde, especially if you take up if you take up you know partnership with the players' guild. Um, they're always looking for people that are quick of mind, quick of ear and eye, stealthy and not too afraid of the dark. If you know what I mean. This sounds good. This sounds good. How how do we? How do we help you make this happen? Well, well, look, if you give us some money, uh, uh, we can get you started. And then you can be your own boss. And then <laughs> you can you can um, work and, and get, get money and, and, and sell your product. And then you give a little bit to me. But then you can get more people to work for you. And then they can give you money. Why do I feel like this is a classic kobold business strategy? Because this is a pyramid <laughs> scam scheme. <laughs> I'm literally just drawing a triangle in the sand yeah. to show them how this works. Where it's like, here's me, here's Puck, and other, and then here's more kobolds, and then I'm just explaining how they will like support. And and with that with that twenty <laughs> deception already, they're just nodding along. They're like, yeah. Yeah, Ruth is like, very just... disgusted at how his attempt at diplomacy and bringing people together is being turned into a <laughs> get-rich-quick scheme. I mean, what is... Meanwhile, Aberforth just pulled out some paper and is quietly taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> what is... I'm getting uh, ready to sign Aberforth up as my second. <laughs> what is what is Gek's intelligence? Uh, my intelligence is... Uh, oh, uh, plus zero. Okay, plus but zero. my charisma is a plus four, so I'm really good at it. Right, I'm just trying to figure out, do you know this is a scam, or is this just an idea that you think Oh, is this really is just an idea Gek has. Yeah, Gek has Gek has fallen for his own scheme. He thinks this yeah. is actually, like, the future. I have, I have gaslit myself. If I uh, make a suggestion, 
why don't we go ahead and make sure that everyone remembers that there's a religious aspect to this triangle of which we are speaking, of which, you know, ultimately at the top of the triangle is k -Tune. And everything we're doing is for the benefit of k -Tune. And we're simply providing the resources for the speakers of k -Tune to continue to speak, continue their proselytization, and ultimately bring more people under k -Tune's loving embrace, while also bidding a horn for, horn for K2. Honestly, I think K2 would love it. We can um, spread the word by, 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 by making and selling friendship bracelets. That's like K2. Can I, can I get a deception? Or by selling weapons. Can I get a deception check from Danian? Oh deception. my goodness. See, thing is, <laughs> the thing is, it's not deception. I am legitimately suggesting the creation of a wider k cult for the purposes of these kobolds being so more you're not, openly uh, accepted. So are you claiming that, like, k wants these things, or are you claiming that you think these would be good for k -Tune? Are you saying I'm claiming that, like, that this would... I'm taking uh, Yuck's <laughs> idea and attempting to make a left-hand turn into religious proselytization and evangelism <laughs> and whatnot. And try and take it slightly away from a direct Ponzi scheme to being slightly more, uh, more steps, <laughs> slightly more religious group that happens to also have a business on the side. <laughs> have you guys seen Rick and Morty, the car battery? Anyone? I have not. Yes. No. This no. Is, I, I think of, oh, gosh, guys. I did just watch a huge documentary <laughs> on the Branch Davidian cult, which is the big uh, cult that was in Waco, Texas, that was making uh, all of its money by creating weapons, totally legally, by the way. And then the ATF decided to come in and cause some hell. Uh, for those of you that don't know about the Branch Davidian cult in Waco, Texas, YouTube or Wikipedia is your friend. Very fascinating thing to learn about. Um, just <laughs> cliff notes from the Rick and Morty is that basically... Rick keeps getting criticized that what he's creating is slavery. And he says, he keeps arguing, no, it's not slavery because they like have their own money. There's like currency and everything. And they, they keep coming back to you. That's just slavery with extra steps. So this is just a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. Did you make the deception check? I did. I was or, going to uh, ask if I could make a performance or persuasion check, given how I am legitimately suggesting okay, this is a... Let's go religious endeavor let's go persuasion 18 okay then basically this was versus Pac isn't with you guys right now but basically will Pac buy this when the rest of the kobolds tell her or will she say no 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 that's not right so 18 18 is pretty good we're turning a loving caring religion into a commerce driven <laughs> Do we know it's loving and caring? Though? That's true. Well, they seem to be. I'm thoughtful. merely taking what's already at play and using it to try and go <laughs> less aggressive capitalism, slightly more onto an open and friendly cult that would be potentially uh, affable for some people to join. You know, <laughs> I think what you guys are walking away with here is that <laughs> they are interested. They. They're trusting of you guys. They think you guys are smart and have. That was will, their first mistake. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> will kind of follow along, believe you guys are acting in good faith, but you know, you guys will have to actually create a Ponzi scheme or whatever you're going to create if you're going to create it. They're, right now, you're in a cave movement. just chatting about philosophy. I would like to make <laughs> the first donation to the horde of K2. Ooh. I swear, if you put in like two copper pieces. <laughs> for the good of k -Tune, for... Is k -Tune female, male, or androgynous? I forget. Just, just, just k -Tune. Just k -Tune. For the good of k -Tune, may <laughs> k -Tune's K gender is k -Tune. <laughs> <laughs> May k -Tune continue to have its name spread far and wide, and for the glory of k -Tune, to be known by all people, Please accept this donation as the first seeds of a larger horde to come as we spread the name of k -Tune and her, his, they, there. As we spread k um 
glorious name to all ends of the earth. The Church of Ketun, led by Huck the Kobold Priestess as High Priestess. And so, with this, I would like to donate to the Horde. And I pull out a smaller money sack, since as any good rogue does, I have my money separated into many small <laughs> things all over my person. I pull out a small bag of coins, and I set it on the ground very, very dramatically, and open it up and turn it inside out onto the ground to create a small little pile of 20 gold coins. Okay. Ooh. Each kobold is gonna, or what, they're gonna like kind of sit in awe at the shininess of this. I don't know if they've ever even seen gold. They might have only ever seen copper or silver. <laughs> Could then... I do uh, the equivalent of 20 gold coins in silver? 200 silver pieces? Sure. So even like... <laughs> I mean... That, that's dramatic. a lot to carry. That's a lot to carry, but I I don't care. If you want, like yeah. I said, several small packages is coming all from all over me. Um, I mean, I Shall I think I? for this moment, twenty gold would probably make the most sense. You've only okay. Got... We'll do twenty gold. Uh, How do you make last all gold? those bags so quiet? Well, you move. I'm surprised you're not jinking all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> I mean, personally, to make it more dramatic, I think you should have um, 20, you know, have just 20 gold, but in copper. Ah, <laughs> no. no small amount. Two 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 well, you'll, exactly. you'll, you'll throw these 20 gold. We'll keep it as gold pieces. You'll throw them on the ground. Um, and they're all going to, they're all going to shock and awe. I think, I think you guys would have gotten the sense that it's more shocking to them that it's actual gold than the like number of it and there's like if i may peck i would like to offer a song to k -Tune to commemorate the starting of k -Tune's horde well but before you do that when you throw down the gold they're they're gonna shock and awe and then one of them's gonna walk up grab one of the gold and be for k -Tune! and run off and then each one of them is gonna grab one and run off and take it to the shrine so oh, i thought they were just going back to their homes yeah. <laughs> no they, they grab it and they're like they're all pumped up they're gonna like go donate this to start building their horde at their shrine there are there are some still hanging around but most of them have done that you'll notice two very very like spread out cotton balls blowing in the wind that were inside there to keep them from jangling <laughs> <laughs> Good. And that's how Danian started a business to buy a Vorpal Sword at level five. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I have a feeling this is going to end with like some other just <laughs> evil aligned adventuring group coming in and managing to take the whole horde. <laughs> it, no, uh, no, no. no they're, they're not your slaves. They're um, our slaves. <laughs> they're I don't like they're the prisoners idea with jobs. <laughs> Could we use the word supplicants instead? As, as I said, more religion, less Oh, I like that word a lot. Because you don't have to water those. <laughs> <laughs> Joke of the night. That's us do it for me to take care of. Oh, put it on a t-shirt. That's on a t-shirt. <laughs> Check out our teespring, ladies and gentlemen, with quotes from the night on... Uh, uh -huh. On t-shirts. So our supplicants will continue to guard the shrine of Ketun and will continue to add to the horde with their wages that they will garner as they work above. Merth, you might need to get in contact with the Players Guild and uh, work out a way for them to be licensed, if you will. It'll help them to be official. I am pretty smart about a lot of things, but this seems very crazy to me. <laughs> Just crazy enough, it might work. No, no. You're the moment right. anybody crazy anywhere starts off a sentence, work. <laughs> the moment anyone says, I am really smart at a lot of things, I just stop listening to the rest of that sentence. <laughs> uh, for the record, I am a chaotic neutral, uh, chaotic neutral uh, alignment. So this is totally mm -hmm. in line with what I would do. Yeah. Gek has no idea what alignment he is. <laughs> Gek's alignment changes Gek depending just on what time of day it is. Mm -hmm. True neutral, sick. <laughs> All right, so I assume we are going to attempt to leave now. Yeah, the um, 
the kobolds have offered you that they can guide you through the tunnels. They're, they've kind of explained that they normally don't get too much trouble in these parts. It's kind of the unfavorable side of the, not a whole lot of other creatures in there. So yeah, if you guys are ready to go out, they will lead you out. Sure. While everyone else is busy, I want to actually approach the kobold priestess. Mm-hmm. Uh, have a private conversation with her. Oh, hello. I'll get down on my knees so we're closer to eye level. <laughs> yeah, you're like Plus, I'm trying to appear mildly reverent. Mm-hmm. Priestess. Yes. How can I help you? I've... I've been feeling quite disquieted over my past actions in my life. And I feel like I need to make amends. I feel like I need to, to, to act, to, to put myself in action to achieve something better in the world. Please tell me of K2 and I wish to know more of their nature, their, of their aspect, if you will. I've, I've been to other temples, but I, I wish to know of your religion as well. Oh, well, K2, he is a, um, he is a he, okay, dragon of of great power and might. Um, his breath has the power to shape the earth, but he's, he's been asleep for as long as anyone can remember. No one knows for sure what, what he's like, but, but we believe that he has breathed life into the kobolds. We believe that he has shaped the, this land as, as according to his will and that someday he will awake and bring justice and peace to the land. Justice, peace. I like it. I like it. Hmm. We may have to talk more. Is there anything particularly involved with joining the cult of Kirtun? As we go about, I do, I do mean to honor my word of spreading Kirtun's name, and I would like to know if there's anything involved in in joining in his uh, in his worship, you know, in case people have questions regarding church membership and all that. Oh well, we can we can bless you in the waters of Ketun like we have your friend. Is, but no, is, he he gives his grace to every every creature. Is there any restriction at all regarding Ketun? I mean, should I be keeping bad apples out, or do you not particularly care about people of a <clears throat> less than Less than blood-free hands. Okay. I'm asking more for myself, meta-wise. Um, like, if k would be mad at your... The fact um, that I am a murderous hobo, yes. Um, you get the sense from talking to Puck that she has answers for any question, but the more detailed you get about, like, the exact how k acts, what he wants, believes, anything like that, you can kind of tell that she doesn't really know. She comes up with an answer, but it's not, like, from any place of authority other than, like, the authority that she's kind of built for herself in this kobold culture, mm. if that makes sense. Yes. You get the sense that in this world, like, divine knowledge and power is very scarce. Anyone actually, like, truly a cleric with a connection to a being would be probably, like, one of very few on the continent. It would be a very special thing that many people would kind of not believe is real. They'd think you're using some other magic and not actually connected to a divine thing. I would love to be washed in the waters of K2. Uh, tell me, could I take a sample of these waters with me so that I may induct others? Oh, certainly. Yes, yes. Uh, here, come, come. And yeah, she will do the same kind of thing that blessing uh, ceremony bit that she did for Gek with you. She'll, if you have like something to collect the, the water in, even you can, yeah, you can kind of take a vial or a bottle or water skin looking, even. <laughs> uh, looking through my, my uh, equipment here. It's probably like a glass bottle that they've kind of grabbed from the beach. That'd be the best thing they've got for you. I would happily dump out my water skin for now. 
and then I can transfer it into smaller vials later. Yeah, yeah, we can kind of take a water skin of this blessed water. Thank you. Um, I, sh- I should catch up with the others. We sh- we should be going. We don't wish to draw any orcish attention to you. And the sooner we get outside, the sooner we can communicate to the outside world that there is a clan of kobolds wishing only peace and tranquility, and that they wish to be of service to the above when the sun is down. There's a defense against any evil intentions at night. Thank you, priestess. Oh, thank you, traffics. All right. Yeah, so whenever you guys want, you can kind of be led out of these tunnels. They know their way around. They're, they're not really going to run into it. They can kind of lead you around any hostile creatures. They know their way around well enough for that. And you can make it back to the beach whenever you're ready. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, yeah, you guys are back at the beach. They'll part ways with you there. Now you guys are back kind of coming into the world. It's like five in the afternoon at this point that it's really windy. The clouds have really firmed up their dark gray threatening rain now. Is there anything you guys are particularly wanting to do in now? Or are you headed Only back wish to the... procure those vials. Okay. We need to do a Anything head else? count of the captured people, too, to make sure everyone's out. Oh, yeah. You can find a... I don't think they stuck around. You guys long rested and everything. You can find the boat kind of washed up on the beach where the cove kind of exits. You don't see any signs of that there was any issue getting out of the um, tunnel. Tybalt is nowhere to be seen. The boat's just been kind of abandoned on the beach. Yeah, we also, there's two more that we're not 100% sure are accounted for, the ones that tried to escape. I'm wondering, I can't remember, was one of them taken, like, did we see signs of one of them being taken away further, deeper into the into the caves? No, or? you saw the signs of where they took the most of them to those pits. Okay. Um, you didn't ever catch any signs of where the two that escaped went. And you brought the two other people out. So there's, yeah, two unaccounted for in those caves. But, you know, it's been a while. They probably either got out or didn't. Right. So they they were running down the pathway that we originally came in through, I think. Like, we saw signs of the the orcs and goblins chasing after them in that direction. Yeah, uh, it seemed like they kind of knew the way they came in and were, and were backtracking. Okay. Yeah, I want to, um, I guess, do a quick check through as we're exiting to see if there are any further signs. Maybe get our ranger to do some tracking to see. I'm sure. Like in what's the sand, if gone anyone came down. out. Can I get a survival check? And sir, a second. That'd be a 14. Okay. It takes you a bit, but you do eventually find some clearer footsteps in the sand coming out of you find like a first pair of footsteps coming out of the um tunnel that looks like normal shoes not like goblin uh wear and then after a while of kind of looking through it you can find a second pair of boots that you get a clear enough sense that they are different people so you you think you've accounted for the last two there Okay. Yeah, it's five o'clock. Are you guys headed back into town? Yes. Let's, let's Not doing anything these, else at the beach. Yeah, let's escort these last few guys out and make sure the two that were fleeing managed to actually escape. Yeah, yeah. So you've kind of confirmed that they've gotten out. Okay, leading this last person back into town, you will walk along the beach, kind of wade your way across the water where that bigger cove was you're getting back to that park you guys started at and um at that point the people following you kind of know their way around and they'll go back find their ways home and at this point we might as well um inform the authorities of what happened right sure yeah smooch our way into getting a reward we were never offered (laughs) (laughs) get paid again for an action that we never we did voluntarily Suddenly, yeah. people are giving us money again, huh? 
Mm-hmm. Maybe. Okay, so yeah, you guys kind of know now since you got that bit of tour of town at the top of the hill. Remember, there's these water aqueduct kind of structures all throughout the city running things and they come off the top of a hill and at the top of that hill is kind of a fancier looking building it's got kind of a bright copper roof to it and overlooks has a view kind of over the town and that's the kind of capital building so you can head that way if you want sounds good probably okay. good to let the people of the town know that they are being targeted by slavers. Yeah. Can I pick up a flask on our way to put this hoil, hoil, <clears throat> holy water into? Just at a shop? Just any old vials will do. I'm hoping to get some smaller vials that can have multiple usages mm -hmm. on hand. Yeah, you can, you know, for like a silver, you can get a pack of five vials. Silver it is. I'll do two silvers and get... 10 vials just in case sure and then on you guys's way to the capital district you're gonna start hearing a bit of a commotion in the streets and you'll hear someone announce everyone make way make way and the crowd's gonna kind of bunch up a bit and um you know it kind of swept into this clearing of the main street as you're being swept to the side. A procession is going to start walking through of noble looking stuff. Daniel, can I get a perception check from you? Yes. With advantage. With advantage. Perception. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a two. That ain't helped nobody. Well, that's a nine grand total. Nine grand I'm total. I'm still coming mm -hmm. out of that hangover I was feeling, I guess. <laughs> Okay. I feel like um, my die apparently hates me today. I think, you know, that there's something you would have noticed if you were closer up, but you're kind of stuck behind too many people. There's a tall person I in front of you. see. <laughs> I need to just put some heels on these boots. I think that helps. Um, <laughs> yeah. So as you'll see these kind of royal looking guards walking through, leading the way, and then you'll see kind of in more and more noble looking people going until at the very end you see a single person walking with a crown on their head through town toward the capitol building kind of coming up from the dock area this person is walking kind of past you guys and then the uh as as they're passing right in front of you you're going to hear a of a what sounds distinctively to some of you uh the firing of a crossbow silvery barbs <laughs> that's if someone fails oh that's true right it's gonna hit the king right in the right in the chest and you're gonna see if you guys are can i get every a perception check from everyone actually yes, perception or arcana is it how late is it or early is it it's five o'clock are you worried about sunlight sensitivity? Yeah. It's pretty cloudy at this point. Um, okay. The sea breeze is bringing stuff Yeah, in. so, because that's like, it's not direct. Mm. It's like I got an 18 fully lit, arcana. but not direct sunlight. 18 arcana. I got well, a dirty 20 on perception. Okay. I really need to put heels did on anyone, my boots. Did anyone beat 20? I got a 10. Okay. 14. <laughs> we got an 18 in arcana. So when this arrow hits, you're going to see a little bit of kind of telltale magical particles float off very slight. And that's going to be it. So that's what you get with the Arcana, actually. With the perception check, you'll notice this bolt is a very kind of dense metal. It's not your typical wooden crossbow bolt. It is made of the of silver you guys have seen before in that immovable rod you have and this king is going to drop instantly you will catch following kind of where the crossbow came from the bolt came from you will catch the glint of a dwarf on your guys's side of the street actually just kind of up the street 
and you can fire back um but we're probably going to end it around here you can go ahead and make an attack roll okay see that's a 19 19 okay you will see that it kind of catches him and he's going to take off running so that's where we're going to leave it tonight no not the king um, I actually don't know he may or may not have been a good guy. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't know about the kink. <laughs> yeah, you guys do not know at the moment. So, yeah, that's what we'll leave it off for tonight. Political mm. intrigue. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for joining us here on the Tale Untold podcast. I hope you've enjoyed playing Dungeons & Dragons with us. Catch you next time. Good night. night. Have a great night, everybody. Right, good night. Good day. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Thank you for listening. If you like what you've heard and want to support, consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and the rest of it. The gesture may seem small, but it makes a big difference. For more information about the show, you can visit our website at arcaneintelligence.com. If you're interested in chatting it up with the cast and other like-minded enthusiasts about all things RPG, consider joining our friendly Discord server. Links are available in the description. Well, that's it. See you in two weeks.